Okay, hi everyone. Um, my name is Eli. Um, I'm a CTO for Ravtech. Uh, before I start, a few words uh, about Ravtech. Ravtech is a software house. We outsource, obviously, in Python, but in additional languages like Java, as well as uh, Android, iOS, and other um, applications. <coughs> and a um, uh, special thing about us is that uh, we employ um, Jewish re religious Orthodox people, Haredim in Hebrew. Uh, so these are, uh, this is a section of the population in Israel which is less employed, less accessible to uh, software. So um, <coughs> if anyone wants to join uh, Jessica's call for action on access, you can join me afterwards. Uh, we'll be happy if you, can, if, we can, if you can outsource some work to us. Um, and uh, obviously, we can also uh, use experienced people for coaching our people and more. Okay, so that's just a few words. And another <coughs> few words about myself. Um, I've been in software like 40 years, so looking at the audience, uh, probably more than most of your ages uh, <coughs> separately. So most of you were probably born after I started doing software. Um, most of my uh, experience is uh, as a VP R&D or CTO. I'm a serial entrepreneur, done a few companies, and um, uh, the last years I'm uh, with Ravtech. So that's just um, to start with. And I've been dealing for Py with Python for quite a few years. So um, before I start, uh, how many uh, are aware of PyTest? Just uh, to get, wow. Because last year when I gave a presentation about PyTest, it was like a few people here and there that heard about it. I hope to see the same about hypothesis after this uh, presentation, uh, because I think, uh, well, PyTest is a better framework for testing. Hypothesis is a paradigm shift. It's a huge step forward. It enables us much, much more than we had. And uh, following uh, Dave's uh, keynote yesterday, um, there's a lot of magic. And a lot of the magic you showed is implemented in hypothesis, so it gives us built-in blocks directly ready for work, and we don't have to deal with stuff. We can just use integers and floats the way that uh, Dave showed the uh, usage. So I'll be demonstrating some of this stuff, explain the logic behind it, but unfortunately, uh, the time I have is very limited. I can only do some introduction. So your homework would be, if it's interesting for you, to go and figure out and learn more. I think, I, and I hope, you will be able to see the value of this new paradigm shift and, and the future of testing. So um, again, I would like to ask a few people to raise their hands. Um, how many of you think that uh, are like, uh, you know, prefer writing testing code over writing the application code? No one, wow, I'm surprised. Okay, and um, how many of you would like to work on a software that wasn't tested. <laughs> Are you the only one? All, all, of the, all of the people prefer to work on software that is not tested. You don't care about testing? Uh, just uh, uh, So again, uh, the answer is trivial. So we need to do some balance. We want to do testing. On the other hand, we don't want to, be, uh, to spend all of our time doing testing code. We want to do the application. So I think hypothesis is a great uh, step forward as it enables us to do very little work and gain a huge amount of testing. And I sure hope we can have time to do uh, the demonstrations. <coughs> so normal test cases is uh, we do some setup, uh, we perform some operations, and we assert about the results, right? That's, that's the usual case. And uh, in hypothesis, we change that. We go for properties, we describe the properties of things, and we let hypothesis do this job for us, to look for test cases, create them, uh, and later on try to uh, even help us identify the exact problem by minimizing them. So I'll be explaining all of that and showing some demonstration. <coughs> so let's start. Uh, I hope everybody can see uh, with a simple uh, demo. Let's just, uh, obviously the first examples would be trivial, but we want to verify that um, our negation of a negation of a number works correctly. So what can we do? Obviously, um, we can write some test cases. For example, 
we can uh, take a parameterize of PyTest and give a list of parameters and the expected results. On the other hand, we know that when we negate the number and we negate it again, we expect the same number. So we can assert that the number and the double negation of it are the same. We can also negate that the number is different from its negation or a zero, for example. We can do a lot of stuff based on the properties of a number. So what do you think about this test? It's a trivial one. Who thinks it will pass? Just you. OK. Who thinks it's going to fail? So there's a lot of people here who are not thinking at all. Come on, help me out. Who thinks it will pass? OK. Who thinks it will fail? OK. So really, the thing is it fails. Because none is a float. Uh, not of, uh, all of us are aware of it, but uh, hypothesis is definitely aware of a lot of things we are not aware of. So uh, <coughs> it, it seems like um, when we negate none and negate it again, we don't get the original none. This is an assertion error. Uh, and a falsifying example, meaning uh, the hypothesis was able to break our code, find a test case where we fail. It went through a lot of test cases. It took it some time, and at the end, it says, well, figure out there's a float value which fails your program, and obviously, uh, you need to deal with it somehow or change uh, the <coughs> assumptions of your code because now you have a failure. And again, no cost, and we test some logic, and sometimes we get surprised by the ability of, of this testing. <coughs> so uh, let's fix it. Suppose I don't care about none, okay? So uh, hypothesis also gives us a way to do uh, some assumptions on our code. Um, Dave yes yesterday mentioned, for example, positive numbers. So I can assume, for example, that x is positive just by saying assume x is bigger than 0. In this case, I only have to assume it's not a none. So who thinks this one will pass? OK, who thinks it will fail? OK. Well, this one passes. Um, the thing is that uh, hypothesis is able to uh, get to the limits where we are not sure of what's going on, and uh, it can surprise us sometimes. So maybe some of us are able to immediately understand whether this will pass or fail, and, uh, but, but hypothesis can do a lot of work for, with us. And again, in testing, this is a trivial effort. I just need to write some properties, describe my data, and let hypothesis do the work. So again, these are very, very trivial examples. I'll give another <coughs> a trivial one. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, <coughs> Here I used, uh, so far, I used uh, a few keywords, uh, so I would like to explain them. The first one is the given. Given is a description of what I expect. I expect x to be a float. It should run between one and a thousand, and uh, I, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <coughs> okay, I'm here. So again, given says that I expect X to get data from floats. It will get many, many, many examples of floats. And then um, my test is, uh, by the way, for people who are not aware, this is uh, Python 3 notation. So there's a, f uh, a type hint says that x is float, but it's meaningless, as again they've said yesterday. And then th there's the assume keyword. Again, it's imported from hypothesis and says, well, let's assume uh, whatever we want. x is bigger than 0, is different than 0, whatever we want. And such te test cases will not happen. So when it arrives to a case where we say assume something, if it gets none, it says, well, none is out of the scope it won't be tested. So um, I, I did it using assume. There is another method for floats, which says just simply allow none is false. And then none is not allowed. Note that I did not uh, disable the allow infinity, which means inf infinity is a valid value, and it is tested. And in, if, we if we double negate infinity, we still get the infinity. So there's a plus infinity, a minus infinity, and it's a val value that passes this test. But we can also disable it in other cases where infinity is not, when we don't care about infinity. 
Okay, so uh, <clears throat> that's another example where uh, um, uh, hypothesis lets us do more. In this example, I define two uh, variables. One of them is a float, the other one is an integer. Not only that, I, I also says saying that I only interested in floats between one and a thousand. That's it, I don't care about any other floats. So any float that will be provided will be uh, accordingly. And I also give an example, even though I did this limitation, where I also would like to have, uh, uh, my example is minus 0 0.0 and 0, whatever that is. And I just want this specific example to be one of my test cases that hypothesis will try. So again, uh, who thinks this one will pass? Who thinks it will fail? Okay, I, I actually this one uh, is passing. <coughs> okay, um, so now um, I talked about simple stuff like integers and floats. Now I, I want to generate lists which have integers in them so that uh, I can test st my stuff on various lists of integers. So this one is a very simple list. And uh, in this case, I just do a reverse. But you can see uh, my, the way I work is that I get the list, I copy it into another one, perform some operations. And th at the end, when I double reverse, I expect uh, the final list to be equal to the original list. And this is something I can test. So if I write a new reverse function, I can test it like that. And again, it will provide me with lots and lots of test cases. Um, wonderful uh, feature, text. Uh, this is uh, definitely uh, valuable for anyone doing Unicode or anything with uh, Python 2 to Python 3 migration because Unicode there gets mixed and this enables us to get wonderful strings with all the possibilities with amazing uh, Unicode uh, options uh, for, the, uh, for our guests from abroad. Uh, the last example is in Hebrew, uh, has to be Unicode. And uh, again, I can check, uh, for ex in this example, I, I check my encoding and decoding mechanism to see that I get exactly the same result. I can add another one to verify that after encoding, I change the code and it has something else. Another wonderful feature, um, yeah. No, I, I, the examples are example to the fact that you can provide examples. In some cases, uh, there, there could be an example which is important for you for some reason. Um, maybe it's a, a special case you are aware of or something like that and you want to make sure it's covered, okay? So you do the general mechanism and you add your own examples and it will be part of the examples provided to your code, okay? Um, so uh, so for here you can see an example of dates. And I also added a limitation that I only want dates after the uh, 4th of July, uh, 1776. Uh, in, in this example, I don't do test cases. I just want this to create data. Again, this is the data track. And sometimes we just want to create data with uh, whatever restrictions or features we want. And that's a way to do that. In this case, I just simply create data. And the result is that I get the list of, uh, of data Obviously, uh, I could also add a max date if I'm not interested in years of 8,824, something like that. But if I am, I can get lots and lots of valid dates uh, out of the box for testing anything that includes dates. <coughs> so we go into the higher level even further. We want to build our own classes. We want to build instances of our classes for testing. So it's a little more complicated, and it's called, uh, it's based on a bundle. However, imagine you know what a dog is, and you can see this example of building dogs, and I hope, as I said, I will have time to actually show it uh, interactively, uh, how it works and uh, how it fails and how it succeeds. In this case, I have uh, demonstrated some more features of hypothesis. The first one, I select the breed from a list of breeds. So I import it from uh, the dog package. Uh, it has uh, lots and lots of breeds in there. And, uh, and the only thing remaining for me is to say, okay, I'm just select one of these breeds 
give it to me. So sample from is another strategy of selecting a, a value out of a list. Uh, the name, I, it, it's a text, okay? We made text before. This time we also have, uh, we want to have it with a minimal size of five, and for some reason I just want it to be um, you know, English letters in uh, all lowercase. That's, that's my requirement. I can have other requirements. Again, I can do whatever alphabet I want, or, uh, but I don't want the entire Unicode. By the way, uh, in this case I did it, this limitation, because when you try to print uh, free text or free Unicode, you get uh, a lot of uh, junk on the console, and it's hardly readable, and it's much easier to understand. And in the case of uh, weight, I, I limited it between one and 100, uh, and obviously I don't allow none, and I don't allow infinity. I don't want a dog to weigh uh, infinity. And I can also have my own example for if I want to have a very specific dog, uh, in this case, uh, the famous uh, spot Labrador. Okay. So uh, when I just uh, print an example of the dogs, you can see the list of dogs. Uh, it's a partial list, and, uh, but, but I can have as many, and you can see that everything, there's a case of 100, there's uh, a lot of uh, breeds of dogs, uh, and the names are uh, readable. As I said, when I started uh, using uh, free Unicode, it was really strange uh, names. Okay, uh, these are also strange names, but... Okay, <clears throat> and uh, once we understand that we could do that, hypothesis go even step further to enable us to do stuff recursively. So suppose we want to build complicated trees which have random values and random branching and lots of, uh, lots of features. So again, uh, these uh, smart guys thought of us and gave us, provided us with the recursive stuff which says in this case, uh, I want to be recursive with booleans with list, so mix them together. Maybe just a boolean, maybe just a list, maybe a list of booleans, maybe a list of lists. In each there are some booleans and some of them are empty lists, whatever. And uh, in this case, when I just run 10 of them, so these are examples that I got. So there are very, very trivial list and there are very trivial uh, boolean values, but also uh, complicated list with values within values. Uh, so again, I can play and these are building blocks. This is amazing because now I can build very complicated stuff for my own objects, from uh, uh, you know, standard objects like di uh, lists, dictionaries, tuples, whatever you can think of. Uh, and all of them are ready to use and will generate for me lots and lots of uh, use cases. Yeah. What? Yeah. Because, yeah, there's, there's a difference between running it for test cases, in which case it, does, it generates different des test cases, and running it just for printing and as providing of data, in that case it repeats. Okay? It may repeat. But in this case I didn't run it as, as test cases. Uh, by the way, an amazing thing, additional amazing thing, is that um, Hypothesis has its own caching mechanism, so it has a folder for doing this caching, and uh, let's say uh, there's a test case that failed. In that case, it stores in, the, in its cache the fact that this is a test case that is important, and it will try to repeat it whenever we do tests. So, uh, so we have another test and another test, and uh, again, we can go over and verify. And when we verify a code, our previous failures are already stored and replayed for us uh, automatically, um, unless we delete this folder, obviously. Okay, so a brief, brief, brief list of uh, um, strategies. You can see complex numbers, it's, it's endless sets, dictionaries, frozen sets, for those who want frozen sets. Uh, we talked about the build, which enables us to build objects, uh, the recursive, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, we can also have uh, infinite streams, so we don't know what kind, how much input we will need, so we c it can provide us uh, an object which is a stream that provides infinite stream. So as long as we want to take data out of it, we will get data out of it. Um, okay, so uh, in addition, there's uh, some more stuff, which is even more complicated. And I think uh, one of the amazing stuff is that we can build stateful uh, test cases. Uh, for example, uh, we want to build uh, balanced trees. 
it can test us in the way, uh, the way to build balance traces of this to add every time some node. And it can monitor the process and, and verify at any, any state that it, it is adding a node that that tree is balanced. So it can uh, provide us information whether we, if we fail at some point, it will show us the way the tree was built so we can go back and recreate or reproduce the scenario that made us get to the point where uh, uh, the tree was balanced until a certain point and afterwards it wasn't. Okay. <clears throat> so um, I would like to show you some stuff behind the, um, to, to, to see how it works. Um, just a second. Okay. So uh, these are examples. Uh, I just wonder if they run in presentation mode. So you can see uh, the examples running. Uh, in this case, uh, I run uh, uh, a test that uh, is for date. You see, uh, I run it. Uh, and obviously, uh, this one, uh, uh, is easy. Now, what I will do, I will di disable uh, the first. You see the given date, I just assert that it's uh, after uh, uh, 4th of July, 1776. Now, suppose I don't give this uh, limitation. So, what do you think will happen now? Will the code pass? Who thinks this code will pass the test? Nobody. Because, what? No, we expect it to fail because now it's a free date. It could be before 1776, right? Yeah, but we should not say statistically it could pass. Yeah, well, listen, this is a hypothesis, okay? <laughs> you should say, wow, we expect everything from it. Of course it will fail, okay? But not only that. What's important is how it will fail. Well, the thing is about hypothesis that after a failure, it doesn't just say, well, I got some random response and it failed for me. No, it, it tries to find the best answer to fail. And in this case, what would be the best answer to fail? Right, we expect to fail on the 3rd of July because this is also uh, information that helps us to see where we are, not just that we failed. Okay, yeah, it's easy to fail this one because it's a free date, so being uh, smart enough, you can do that. But Pinpointing the failure is, is more interesting. So let's see another example. Um, let's see uh, lists. So obviously, this one uh, should pass because we just reverse it twice, right? Now what happens if we uh, change one of the values inside the list? Okay. What's going to happen? What's the minimal list? What's the simplest list that fails us that is easy to understand what the problem is? Yeah, a list of four. What values will we expect there? So you can see it's a list of four zeros. Probably the simplest list to fail uh, in this case, uh, this scenario. So um, unfortunately, I'm running out of time. Um, I just uh, hope you got some glimpse of the possibilities and the wonderful world that is expecting us, building for us test cases. And when we are failing, trying to find the simplest and, and easiest to understand failure. And uh, I think uh, everyone who will start using it will be amazed at their possibilities. So we have a few minutes for questions. Um, I'd be happy to address. Yeah, please. So um, you can see available integrations, uh, PyTest, Unitest, knows actually uh, any test framework. Uh, it works out of the box. Uh, obviously, you have to uh, uh, pip install uh, uh, hypothesis, but that's it, pip install. OK, it works. It's fine. Uh, you, uh, you show, uh, I demonstrated the test uh, in the PyTest uh, example, but it works with Unitest as well. Uh, some of it includes a uh, test case, which is uh, 
a unit test uh, feature, the, the object test case. So, for example, if you test a balance tree, you create a test case, okay? So, uh, but you don't care about that because you use a very simple hypothesis uh, syntax. Behind the scenes, there uh, could be usage of other packages. Uh, there's an example of uh, Django, creating objects for Django. So it's a model. Uh, so there's a strategy to create models, num whatever. I mean, it's amazing. It's all there. Just go ahead and use it. OK? I hope I answered. Yeah. OK. More questions? I have still time? Yeah, please. Well, th there's, no, uh, there's a notion of a list of integers. So th it will be varying. Or you can define that you want six of them or 10 of them. I mean, it's, it's up to you. If you want a, a, a varial number, then create a list of, of them, and you'll get as many as you want in, in, in a changing uh, uh, every time you get a, a different number. If you want uh, a fixed number, then just define them, and, and you got them. That's it. That's as simple as that. But you can also define list of 10 or whatever, again. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. There's a. Uh, it's an another slide, which I didn't have time to show. There's a default number. I think it's 2,000 test cases. But you can modify it. So you can do whatever you want. And in the example case, uh, you can, uh, there's a function called example. And every time you call it, you get one. So you can do your own loop to create as many as you want. OK? OK, yeah. Oh, last question, yeah. Well, that's, that's why it's called property-based. You have to understand the properties and test against the properties. That's Unfortunately, I don't have time to address this, but so the idea is, is property-based testing. Like yeah. There's, there's ways to, to, to test it. Okay, thank you very much, everybody.